roller coasters are one of my biggest loves in life. I mean, I love theme parks, but my favourite rides will always be roller coasters. And though I haven't actually been on all that many, with my total probably being close to 30, I've selected the top 20 that come to mind, and ranked them personally based on my experiences with the coasters, and the designs, themes, and impressiveness of the rides. My opinions may or may not shift in the future if I have any exceedingly good or bad experiences on any ride, or when new rides come along. Star 4 Racers and Donkey Kong at Epic Universe 2025 is sure to bump my lower ranked rides off the list. But for now, here are my top 20 roller coasters I've been on. Number 20. Seven Dwarfs Mine Train at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. It's a family friendly coaster with emphasis on family that essentially acts as a toned down Big Thunder but with a recognizable child friendly IP. It suffers the same pacing issues as Big Thunder too, but is noticeably smoother. Number 19, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom. Slightly bigger and better than the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, but still has some pacing issues that come naturally when you have three slow lift chain hills. A fun time, but very rough. Number 18, Space Mountain, Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom. Despite being rather short and bumpy, Space Mountain's track is hidden in darkness, creating unpredictability for riders. Additionally, seeing the fake stars as you zoom around space is very aesthetically pleasing. Number 17, Slinky Dog Dash at Walt Disney World's Hollywood Studios. Another family-friendly coaster that features enjoyable launches and some fun airtime moments, although some hills too close together induce bumpiness instead of airtime. A great time, especially for younger coaster enthusiasts. Number 16, Rita at Alton Towers. The opening launch is magnificent and leads into a lot of satisfying curves, but after the launch there isn't really much to the track, rendering it somewhat bland. 15. Expedition Everest. Walt Disney World Animal Kingdom. Steps up another gear from Magic Kingdom's coasters, giving us bigger drops, some really enjoyable turns, and a lovely bit of backwards track along with the iconic broken track set piece and the impressive, albeit famously broken, Yeti animatronic. This ride feels much more immersive than the other outdoor Disney coasters and provides a very beautiful view of the Animal Kingdom, the highlight of the park for me. Number 14, The Wicker Man at Alton Towers. Most tower goers would rank this ride much higher and may be unhappy with me, especially considering that by deduction, I ranked 13 higher than this, but that's not going to change my ranking. Yes, the Wicker Man is beautifully themed, and the actual Wicker Man itself is very impressive, but I find that the ride track layout isn't itself as good. Sure, it's pretty fun as a wooden coaster, but it's not overly intense in any particular department. Drop height, steepness, etc. And at the end, upon returning into the building area, I feel the ride had an opportunity to do something grand as a finale with the empty room before the curve into the loading area, like having actual fire on the walls and ceiling, or something jumping out towards the rider vehicle. Other than that, it's a very fun experience but lacks any particular on-ride wow factor. But kudos to the Towers team for that pre-show, which is really good and built up the ride very well. Number 13, the Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. Universal Studios Orlando. The name of this ride may not make much sense considering this ride is not based in Hollywood, but Rip Ride Rocket promises a good time, jamming to music on your ride. While the track itself is a little rough and bumpy after all these years, the layout is quite exciting, having some memorable maneuvers including the world's first non-inverting loop and a vertical chain lift. However, what makes this ride so neat is that it gives you the perfect reason to keep rewriting it. You can pick your music. With 30 bass songs to choose from across 5 categories and a plethora of secret songs, it's worth going back to the try the ride with different songs. Go from metal on one ride to the Muppets on the next. The song selection is very diverse. Twelve. Thirteen. Alton Towers. So close to being ranked thirteen. Thirteen was rather unfortunately oversold by the Alton Towers marketing team as the scariest roller coaster ever, one which would reportedly require guests to sign a waiver to ride, though that never actually happened. Thirteen is set in the dark forest in which guests attempt to escape the curse of the forest, which after a respectable first act of coaster, winds up in a crypt that contains a bit of a surprise. 
The ride's concluding second act is by far its best feature, and synergizes with its theming incredibly well. Throughout the entire experience, 13 maintains its ominous feeling. I feel 13 deserves more love, and possibly would have received that if it wasn't oversold to the public, and wasn't the replacement for the much-loved corkscrew roller coaster. Number 11, Nemesis, Alton Towers. Nemesis is iconic. If you ask any Towers fan to name a roller coaster from the park, most would probably say Nemesis out of sheer instinct. It's one of the oldest rides still operating at the Towers, and the fact it's now getting a retract proves that Nemesis is going to be around for a long time still. The theming of the coaster being used to contain an alien beast is very strong, and the inverted coaster has a total of four inversions. However, I feel that Nemesis is slightly overrated, carried by nostalgia and decent theming. Nemesis is really fun, don't get me wrong, but it has no particular excellent feature to it, but it's a solid all-rounder. Number 10, The Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith, Walt Disney World's Hollywood Studios. Make it a super stretch. The Rock and Roller Coaster launches riders in a super stretch limousine at high speeds immediately into inversions while Aerosmith music blasts through your speakers. This indoor dark coaster may be in the midst of a rumoured D aerosmithing, but the ride is still awesome and an incredibly enjoyable indoor dark coaster. Number 9. Dueling Dragons slash Dragon Challenge 1999-2017 at Universal's Islands of Adventure. The only dead coaster on my list. Dueling Dragons once sat where Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure now sits, and was an attraction featuring two dueling inverted coasters later repurposed as the Chinese Fireball and Hungarian Horntail to tie into the theme of Harry Potter, specifically the Goblet of Fire. After a few incidents, the ride became Dragon Challenge after the decision to have the two tracks no longer duel was instated. Both coasters were significantly different, with the blue Hungarian Horntail loaded with a Cobra Roll, whereas the red Chinese Fireball reached higher speeds. Both offered a fun experience. I unfortunately only got to ride each twice in 2017 before it closed, but if I could revive any dead attraction, it'd be Dragon Challenge, which always had modest queue times whenever I went to it. Number 8. Air slash Galactica, Alton Towers. Air, you can fly. The tagline Alton Towers provided was pretty apt, as this is the only flying coaster I've been on, and it really does feel like you're flying. The Galactica overlay may not have been successful, but the name remains. Despite that, any true fan of the ride will still refer to this ride as Air because that is what it was when it was at its best. Just Air. The third successful secret weapon project by John Wardley, Air is an incredibly beautiful ride once you get out of the very ugly tunnel the, the ride first bends around. Five or so seconds in which you stay flying on your back is unlike any feeling, and if you get the timing right, Riding air just as the sun is setting and the sky is a mix of blue, red, orange, and purple is possibly the single most beautiful experience I've had on a roller coaster in my life so far, and will take something quite extraordinarily spectacular to beat it. Number 7 Oblivion, Alton Towers. Don't look down. The three words synonymous with the world's first vertical drop coaster, clocking in with some monstrous figures. 87.5 degree drop angle, 68 miles an hour maximum speeds, and a 180 foot drop. What makes that last figure so intimidating is that the ride sits only 65 feet above ground. Do the math, that means that the ride goes 115 feet below ground. The eight wide by two long cars are tipped over the edge of the drop and held there as riders are forced to look down into the mist-covered tunnel the track disappears into, or simply close their eyes in fear. While the rest of the ride may not be much to look at, its selling point sticks to the landing and that's all anyone wants from Oblivion. You're riding it purely for the rush that drop gives and Oblivion succeeds at meeting expectations Welcome. perfectly. Number 6, The Incredible Hulk Coaster, Universal's Islands of Adventure. A staple of the Islands of Adventure, The Incredible Hulk Coaster is one of the park's most recognisable attractions. Featuring perhaps the most iconic Cobra Roll in the world, featuring seven inversions, this ride doesn't hold back in intensity, and that's why I always come back to this ride every time I visit IOA. 
The single rider queue tends to be quite short, and the ride's sequel Gamma Tour gives a lot of extra detail to the ride's theming and story, which really helps you to appreciate how well made the ride is. The addition of the ride's composition by Fallout Boy complements the experience perfectly, and the build-up of anticipation in the Gamma Bombardment Chamber before you shoot out at high speed into a zero-g route is perfect. Number 5, Hacker's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, Universal's Islands of Adventure. Evidently, I loved Dragon Challenge. Usually, when Universal removes a ride, the replacement is better than the predecessor. Look no further than Revenge of the Mummy replacing Confrontation. However, the very ex existence of Fast and Furious Supercharged proves that this isn't a guarantee, as it replaced the more entertaining Disaster Attraction. Hearing that the Dragon Challenge coasters were going to be replaced by a family coaster, I was somewhat disappointed. The key word being family, which usually indicates a more toned down ride with less throws and well, there are no inversions to be had with this new coaster. However, Hagrid's doesn't hold back at all with a crazy number of launches, backtracking, and a 13-esque surprise within the Devil's Snare. Paired with a unique ride vehicle and some very well made animatronics, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure is actually one of the best roller coasters I've been on, running incredibly smoothly and providing a solid, not too intense, family friendly experience anyone can enjoy, Potterheads and Muggles. My only complaint is the absolutely ridiculous queue times. Number 4, Revenge of the Mummy, Universal Studios Orlando. Few rides are as iconic as Revenge of the Mummy, a ride so beloved that after a plethora of wins, this ride ended up retiring the Best Indoor Coaster Award due to it constantly winning year after year, and was given legendary status. The ride has had over 100 million passengers since opening, and has just recently undergone extensive refurbishment, signifying that Imhotep's curse isn't leaving anytime soon. Revenge of the Mummy is an indoor dark coaster, but themed on Brendan Fraser's 1999 cinematic masterpiece, The Mummy and takes guests onto the set of a fictional sequel to The Mummy Returns, entitled Revenge of the Mummy, at which point Imhotep rises again and riders are launched into darkness. The combination of playing on fears, a simple yet sleek trap, and amazing show elements make Revenge of the Mummy the best attraction in the studio side of Universal. Number 3, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, Walt Disney World Epcot. With the Guardians of the Galaxy IP and the world's first backwards launch, this ride was always destined for greatness. Sitting in the otherwise ride bland Epcot, uh, Cosmic Rewind provides what is essentially a perfectly upgraded version of Space Mountain, featuring a great story and pre-show room, a smooth track with cards that rotate on the track, and a cool soundtrack. This ride is exceptional, Disney's finest. Number 2, a Jurassic World Velocicoaster, Universal's Islands of Adventure. The Velocicoaster is frickin' sweet. Everything is just so awesome. The two high speed launches, the incredible top hat maneuver, and the great theming make this a must do at Islands of Adventure. The back row is an amazing experience for speed, whereas the front row offers the best views over the island. There's really not much more to say about the ride, it speaks for itself. Top hat's off to Intamin for this one. An honorable mention Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts from Universal Studios Orlando. I wasn't sure whether to include this ride, as it is primarily a 4D ride that happens to be on a coaster track. However, this track has some fun elements. The best part by far is near the start of the ride, when the track tilts down approximately 55 degrees or so, and eventually releases the car for a fun drop. Additionally, the car's turning on track to view focal points is quite fun too. I wanted this list to consist of pure roller coasters, so decided not to include this ride, but to give it a shout out for what is quite a fun track to support the 4D elements, but by itself would be an incredibly basic and bland track. Number 1, The Smiler, Alton Towers. Join us. I have never been more fascinated by any roller coaster in my life than The Smiler. I've been following the ups and downs of this ride's history for almost a decade. I finally got to ride this mental coaster in November of 2022, and I loved it. It's easy to become lost in its themes of marmalization as this ride does everything possible to disorientate you and render you brain dead. True to its backstory and setting as an experiment run by the Ministry of Joy to make people stop worrying and smile always, using various sinister tactics. 
The cue alone is enough to mobilize you with madness-inducing music and a room filled with hypnotic patterns and strobe lighting. The Smiler rolls into its first of a record-breaking 14 inversions before even reaching the first lift hill. The ride features a much-needed halfway break before climbing a vertical lift hill and rolling into the second half of Inversion Insanity. This infinity coaster made by German company Gerslauer was built and marketed superbly, and the Smiler is definitely my favourite of all the roller coasters I've been on, because I became so lost within the ride's story that I just forgot about the real world. Considering the Alton Towers don't have the advantage of well-known intellectual property for their rides like Disney and Universal do, the Towers team did a great job creating an original story for this ride that feels like it extends beyond the ride's caged walls. And once you've been on this ride, you belong to the Smiler. So that rounds up my top 20 roller coasters that I've been on so far. Obviously, I will revisit these once I've been on a decent amount more roller coasters. I'm looking for the Tron coaster in Walt Disney World. I'm looking for the ones at Epic Universe when it opens. There's going to be, I think, at least four roller coasters there. So we're going to have a lot of updates to do in 2025. But for now, those are my top 20. I don't think the Smile is going to be moving anytime soon, but those Magic Kingdom ones at the bottom, they've got a good chance of getting knocked off in the future. Uh, be sure to check out my video ranking every attraction at Universal, and I'm also planning a video of my top 10 bucket list roller coasters. Thank you for watching, and be sure to let me know what your favorite roller coaster is that you've been on. Bye!